יופי. אנחנו בלייב, מה נשמע, שירלי? בסדר, בסדר. אני שמחה להיות פה שוב. הפעם באנגלית. הפעם באנגלית. כן. אנחנו תכף נעבור לאנגלית, ניתן לאנשים קצת זמן להיכנס. ונתחיל באמת את השיח שלנו, שדרך אגב, אני יודעת שהרבה מאוד אנשים פנו אליי ו- ושמחו מאוד שיש שיח גם באנגלית בנושא הזה. אני שמחה לשמוע, זה חשוב, ממש. כן. Okay, great. For the, for the sake of the people who, who came in on time, so thank you guys. Um, okay, so hello everybody. My name is Miri Toffman. I'm a attorney. My main pro- practice is dealing with uh, estate planning and elder law, which means wills, trusts, um, enduring path attorneys. I also devise on... estate and tax issues with people who have dual citizenships, U.S. and Israeli. And for my exposure with elder people, I've come to realize that there's so many other important issues, um, not legal, that should be addressed that concern elder people that they'd like to hear about. And so I decided to host these talk sessions, talk to, talk to or to talk, um, with other professionals who deal also with, Um, and advice regarding elder issues. And today we're going to talk to Shirley Kaumi, who is a social mm-hmm. worker and deals with old age and health issues about ageism and its impact on our day to day. So thank you very, very much, Shirley, for joining us. You're and welcome. I'm happy to be here. We're happy very much that you're here. And why don't you introduce yourself? Okay, so my name is Shirley Kaumi. Um, I'm a social worker like for 15 years now. Um, I worked in an old age home in the north and then uh, for 10 years in geriatric department in Shari Tzedek in the hospital and also rehabilitation there. And now I work in Maccabi, Kupat Cholim Maccabi, um, both in um, clinics and also at uh, home visits for elderly that cannot come to, to the doctor. Right. Okay. Mm-hmm. So today we're discussing ageism, but let's start from the beginning. Can you define what ageism is? And also there's this term self-ageism. So if you can discuss a little bit about those term, that term as well, that would be great. Okay. So ageism is actually a process of stereotyping Or discrimination uh, against individuals or groups on the basis of their age it's um, seeing someone on the street who is old and automatically thinking automatic thoughts about him like he, he might be slow or he doesn't understand or he's he doesn't hear well automatically these automatic thoughts uh, they they go on to us and um, and it is It implies on how we reach to this person. Um, self-ageism is when someone thinks negative things about themselves, about their age. Um, I'm too old to do this. Um, there was a very interesting research, actually, um, done by uh, physical therapists that they saw, they measured uh, how fast people walk. And, and they also ask them questionnaires about what they think about their age. So the people who thought positive things about their age actually walked faster. That's amazing. That's so amazing. it has real impacts about um, everyone's, like even basic things like walking. You know, it's really funny that you mentioned walking. You and I are both on the sa- in the same uh, WhatsApp group, and there was this post today about this Chinese guy who did the catwalk at the age of 80. Did you see that? I didn't get to it yet. So there's this uh, 80-year-old model, guy model, okay. um, from China, who, who said that um, he only started actually working out in the gym at the age of 70. Wow. And obviously, he takes very good care of himself. I mean, he eats... properly and whatever, but he only started going to the gym at the age of 70. And one of his things 
was to go on the catwalk and uh he did he did wow. actually shirtless and you know what kudos to him he doesn't look bad at all, and he's 80. It was, it was very, it's very cool. You should have a look when you have the Wow, I, yeah, I look at it. Wow, that's amazing, amazing. <laughs> yeah, so mm -hmm. he doesn't have self-ageism, obviously. <laughs> no, no, no. But I know many people who do, who think, this week I was speaking to a, a lady in Kupat Cholim, and she told me, I look at the mirror, and I see an old woman there, and I, and I say, oy la voy, that's terrible. And I thought, oh, so the self-ageism here is, is really terrible. And it makes her feel so bad about herself. So we tried to talk about it, about how to look, look at her age in a more positive way. It'll affect her mood for, for sure. Uh, absolutely. I mean, mm -hmm. we all say, you know, that if you say to yourself positive thinking or positive thoughts, then you can do things and it impacts your life. And it, it probably also impacts self, self ageism, as you said. If you're saying, I'm too tired, I'm too old, I can't learn this, this is new, this is difficult for me. Computer right. technology, probably, that people find very frustrating. And then they also. Right. They don't even ageism. try because they right. think that they won't understand. Right. Mm -hmm. It's, right. Yeah, it's too bad. Mm -hmm. So, so right. yeah, I was thinking you're hundred percent right. It's, it's such a, we, we do it to ourselves. We do it to ourselves all the time, but as we get older, right. I guess we do it to ourselves even more. Right. So as long as we, we talk about this thing called ageism and we bring it up to our acknowledgement, then we're actually um, doing the best for our own future. Um, it, it'll impact our future for sure because um, we'll think positive things about ourselves. And also I'll talk at the end about education and how, how we um, teach our children to be uh, less ages and it's really important. It's really important. You know, there's mm -hmm. something else I was just thinking about. I had a client recently come up to me and it was not the first time I've heard this where she said, you know, my daughter lives out of town, so sometimes she comes visits me, and I actually sometimes make my doctor appointments on the days that she comes visit because she has a car. It's just easier for me if she comes with me to the doctor. But what happens is when she sits at the doctor and suddenly I'm no longer there, I'm like non-existent because the doctor for some reason assumes that I'm deaf or dumb or both, and he doesn't address me at all in the conversation. He actually speaks to my daughter. And I remember once telling the doctor, I was really frustrated, I said to him, I'm right here. I can hear you fine. I'm the right. patient to talk to Right, me. yeah, right. People uh, feel that all the time. I worked in a hospital for 10 years and I saw, I saw sometimes not out of um, um, bad, uh, you know, habits or something, but out of the uh, pressure of a lot of work, but people come to the ER and automatically the doctors or the nurses, they talk to the family, they don't talk to the person. Or if two people come with the same um, uh, complaints and one of them is 20 and the other one is, is 80, then automatically they would want to treat the 20 year old first. And it's so unfair. It's and who very, said that they're more, you know, their lives is more precious than the eight year old? A hundred percent. You're absolutely right. So mm -hmm. what does actually our age tell us about ourselves? Does our age tell us anything about ourselves? So I think each one should uh, honestly ask themselves, uh, what do I think about my age? Um, some people, um, I, especially women, are very ashamed to say their age uh, in certain ages. And uh, I went once to a conference about ageism and they, they um, gave each one a sticker to put on the, on the shirt and they, they gave a, a marker and we had to write our age. And right. it was like, and, and we saw that some ladies didn't put it on. They were ashamed of their age. I have, my mother has a friend who, she doesn't know how old she is. She never told her. So why, how did we get to this uh, point where we have to be ashamed of our age? It's um, an, an age only tells us about how many years uh, passed since we were born, nothing else more. Um, you, you know, people can uh, feel uh, young and energetic, just like when they're 70, just like 30, 
Uh, it's all in the head. It's all inside. It's so true. A, the, there's a thing that people say, age is just a number. You can meet two people on, on the street. They're both 70, let's say. One feels and acts like he's 13. And the mm -hmm. other feels and acts like he's 90. Just because mm -hmm. he just acts old, but that's nothing to do with the age. He was probably acting like that way before he became 70. It's just, you know, right. personality. Thing. Right. Today I met, um, it, it's, it was amazing. There was an old lady, I went to a home visit, and the person who took care of her was her daughter-in-law. And the daughter-in-law, she had so much on her shoulders, she was taking care of both a, a husband who was handicapped and her mother-in-law, and she looked much older than the mother-in-law who was um, a journalist, and she wrote articles, and she was very young <laughs> so it was amazing how yeah it's it's You're all right. inside our head it's all in our head it's so true yes so ageism how does it impact our daily life i'm assuming it impacts a lot of things can you give right. us some examples yeah so actually there's different areas where we see the impact um we talked about the medical area so right. let's talk about media a little bit. But we see the commercials. Uh, we don't see um, uh, old people um, advertising products. It doesn't advertise. It's not cool. It's not, um, you know, right. we it have to sell. see. You're right. Yeah, it doesn't sell. So we have to see young people all the time. Or journalists, um, actors, politicians usually are more young people. We see on the TV, we see young people, like actors on series. Um, most of them are young, and they give certain uh, roles for older people, um, like usually more um, angry or sad. Um, it's we don't see a lot of old people in um, in main uh, you know main uh, roles. Main characters, right? Main right. characters, and yeah, it's very. We can see the discrimination very much in the media. Um, also, in workplaces, we right. saw right now in the corona, uh, the Social Security gave grants for people who lost their jobs in the COVID, but they didn't give them to people who, who were past retirement age. And it's really discrimination because they were working, they lost their job because of COVID, but they didn't get the grant. And it's it's terrible. It is terrible. Yeah. Also, I think I think at the workplace, I find it actually um, very sad that sometimes when there is somebody who is younger, who is in charge of somebody who is older, um, they treat them already as if they're half out the door and they're less important as a voice in the in the uh, workplace. It's not so important to listen to what they have to say sometimes. Right, right. Um, yeah, we see that a lot, yes. And also um, finding a job uh, on certain ages is almost impossible. I mean, a lot of companies look for young people um, because I don't know, it, I guess it looks better but actually, it's exactly the opposite because old people, they don't like go out to um, maternity um, leaves, right? right? And they have a lot of time. They don't have little children that they have to leave and go pick them up. Right. Um, a lot of experience. So it should be the opposite, actually. But we don't, we don't see it that way. It's true. You know, it's funny when you mention that because I, who am not that, I'm not yet considered on the way to pension. Um, before I decided to become self-employed and I was looking for a job, and because I'm over 40, people already put me in the category of too old. Wow. Is, yeah. It was really interesting to see. I remember sp speaking to somebody who goes, but you're old. And I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> It was, it, was, it was very weird. So I, I can just imagine Kal Vachomer, people who are older than me, what kind right. of what kind of reactions they get when they're looking for a job. When yeah. actually 
exactly like you said, they have way more experience and they can show people things. They're also probably calmer because they don't have the pressure of going home and taking care right. of young children. They don't have the maternity leave, like you explained. So it's right. really silly not to use all that manpower, which is very, very precious. Right. Yeah, exactly. And it's not fair. It's, it, it causes them to go into um, uh, financial pressures and um, you know the the kitzbat zikna that that they get is is nothing it's really it's, it's a joke and um, it's, it's really too bad it's like that it's true you know I was thinking about it because the lifespan has become longer than what it used to be suddenly mm -hmm. all these kupot gemel and pension accounts and bituach zikna are not really sustainable for so many years and now people live longer and so right. they do have to they have to work for a longer time in order to be able to you know to sustain themselves in the way that they want to um and and it really is more difficult for them the whole yeah. system needs to re sort of resort itself out because it's really not working for people who are living longer lives right right i just i heard just now like lately they they have um uh, moved forward the age of, um, I think, women uh, until 70, uh, the oh, age really? of work. I think it, it just, uh, you know, it's it's going on right now. So okay. things are moving. Um, you know, some ladies don't like it so much, but, uh, but things are moving, and I think for the better. Well, that's, that's really good. Yeah. What... I don't know if we touched this. We might have touched this. So tell me if we did. But there were like some hidden and some obvious messages that we were raised on regarding ages and that probably impact the way A, we see things and also the way we, you know, transfer this information onwards. Yeah, sure. No, we didn't talk about it. And I, I wanted to address it. Um, so first of all, inside the family, uh, we can start to do a research about our family. What were the messages that we got there? Uh, in terms of our grandparents, how were they treated? Did they have a say in the family? When we sat in, um, you know, meals for Shabbat and holiday, were they a part of the meal or were they sitting in the side and not feeling so much part of everyone? Um, did they get, uh, were they part of getting decisions for the family? Um, so these are things that without us uh, knowing we had messages going inside and it infects uh, what we think about the old uh, life. Right. And, um, and also the messages we get from the society. You know, in Hebrew, there's, an, there's a saying, the world is, uh, belongs to the, to the young people. Right. Um, it's a message that, you know, everybody knows it. And actually it says, wait a second, old people don't belong. They're not part of society. Or take, for instance, um, senior homes. The whole idea of senior homes, which, you know, there's a lot of po positive things in it, but the whole idea is closing them in closed places and not having them being part of a community. And why? We should ask, why is that? Why can't um, the environment in the neighborhood be accessible for old people in turn, instead of them having have to leave their homes and going to a senior home or activities in the matnas, um, you know, the um, youth, youth groups. Um, why aren't there activities for different ages together? Right. Um, yeah. That's true. That's true. Everybody can actually benefit if it was a mixed, mixed age group activity. Um, I'm sure you saw also there was this program called Shmonim Ve'alba, or I think it was mm -hmm. Shmonim Ve'alba. Um, yeah, which yeah, was, was beautiful. Yeah, so beautiful. I cried every scene, every scene. <laughs> but it was um, when you had like the the kindergarten that came to the Betavo, the senior home, and they did activities together, and how it impacted. The people there, they became suddenly more lively. They felt happier. Their well-being was better. Their yeah, their it was amazing how the how it impacted them. And they also they they did they really measured 
like different um, physical abilities and cognitive abilities um, before and after. And it was great improvement. It was amazing. And also the kids, it was so natural for them. And they, they enjoyed so much. And it was really amazing to see it. It was, it was, it was amazing to see it. There yeah. was this article I read quite a while ago in New Zealand. Um, it was very funny. There was this woman who bought an, an, uh, an apartment in a building. Mm -hmm. And she suddenly realizes that all the people in the building are older people, much, much older people. And then she realizes what happened was that this group got together and decided to buy apartments in this building because for for their social purposes. And she didn't realize it. She went into this building. She moved in. And mm -hmm. she says, she, she was interviewed. She says, it's the best place ever. Everybody is my grandmother. Everybody takes <laughs> care of me. They all make food for me. They're all calling to make sure I'm okay before. Wow, I'm amazing. <laughs> she loves it. It's the best thing ever. And that's amazing. That really shows that we can, the young people can provide so much from being in interactions with old people. Actually, my, my kids have a magazine where um, we get every month. And right. this, this month, there was a beautiful article about different activities that grandchildren can do with their grandparents. And I was so happy to see it because there, things are starting to move towards right. better places. And there's more talking about it. And also the COVID, we talked a lot about the old people. Um, being home alone and can't go out and we have to protect them. So they were more, you know, raised up to the knowledge of the whole society and that's really important. That's true, that's true. Yeah. And it really impacted the fact that they couldn't go anywhere. It impacted their physical well-being and their mental well-being. The fact that they suddenly oh, yeah. felt that they were isolated. Your yeah, we see many, many patients that they just went down during the COVID um, because they were isolated and, and they couldn't go out and mentally it was terrible. Um, I see many patients now that just now they're going out and they suddenly feel like something has changed. Um, they're not the same like they were before and they're trying, starting to treat themselves and yeah, it's very, the impacts are hard. Yeah, it does. So what, what can we do when we come across ageism? What do you suggest? Okay, so what I think is, first of all, to give the person the ability to, um, to show them that they're in the center, to show them that we care about them. If we see something going on, like in the ER, um, a lot of times I was standing next to a doctor that talked to the family and not to him, and I, I automatically addressed the old person and I said, how do you feel about it? You know, and I showed the doctor how to act. It was very important. Or one time I went, uh, not, not in work, I went to buy myself falafel and there was this lady there with her caregiver and she was in a wheelchair and she couldn't, um, the, the, the seller was behind the counter he was too, it wasn't in the same uh, right. level. Yeah, right. Right. And um, she couldn't get to him. She couldn't tell him what she wants in the pita. And, um, and they had, I helped her actually to say what to the seller, what she wants. But the simplest thing would do just to go around the counter and talk to her and, you know, um, look in her eyes and see what she wants. So yeah, just to treat them, to, to give them the treatment that they deserve. I think you're so right. You know, I think I think social media has, has become, turned us into very impatient people. Everything needs to be fast, 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 fast. And when something doesn't go as fast as we expect it to, then we don't bother addressing the person slowly or maybe louder or just looking into their eyes or going across the counter because it's so much easier to just move on to the next person because you know we're we're so busy 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 trying to do things so quickly 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 right, right. yeah exactly we don't have patience for the and also the the connection between the people is so important because yeah she got at the end she got what she wanted but 
she didn't feel that the salesman, you know, she, he didn't see her and she didn't feel she was treated. So yeah, it feels very uncomfortable, very um, humiliating even. I'm sure it does yeah. feel very un humiliating, especially if somebody's already in a wheelchair, she already feels so, uh, she's already feeling not mobile, she's already feeling restricted herself. So if somebody, you know, probably pushes her just to realize it even more, it makes her go home feeling really not good. Really, yeah, exactly. And also education. Education is very important. I really believe from a young age, even to put it into the um, education, you know, into schools um, and talking to kids about it. Uh, my kids, when they see something like a commercial, automatically they say, ah, that's ageism. <laughs> I say, okay. Oh, your children, Shirley. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. But it shows how much it's important from the young age to, to, to educate them, uh, to see the old people around them, not, not to treat them like they're transparent. And um, it's really, really, really important. And they'll grow to be grown people who respect older people. And uh, at the end, also respect themselves. It's true, and they'll be much better people for it, because mm -hmm. as you, as we know, when we, we were talking about that program eighty and four, mm -hmm. they the children really, you know, the children did not discriminate the el the elder people mm -hmm. because of their age at all. But what happens mm -hmm. is at some point they learn from the adults that there is a way to look at them which they weren't thinking about before, and you're right, right if you put it into the system very early on, um, then then it won't, you know, that won't be becoming an issue anymore. They'll stay on the same ground that they were when they were younger, and they'll be able to actually, you know, be more respectful, which will right. make us better people. And also, right. you know, the, the, the people themselves, as because all of us are going to grow old. These kids are going to grow exactly. old. Everyone wants to be treated nicely at the end of the day. So, yeah, exactly. so those people the same way that they would want to be treated themselves. Really, yeah. really. Important. Yeah, exactly. I really and also, um, I call, you know, I, uh, I talk to the old people not to be ashamed to speak for themselves. And I had this wonderful old lady I talked to that said that she went to a lecture. And at the end of the lecture, um, the teacher said, uh, okay, whoever has questions, and there were some hands, uh, you know, in the air. Mm -hmm. And and they, he chose only the young people to talk and he was like not seeing her at all. And she had a question. So at the end, she just stood up and she said, I have a question too. So um, not to give up, not to say, okay, never mind. No, it does mind. Your, your voice has to be heard. It has to be heard. You're loud and clear. Exactly, she got up because as you said, most people would give up on that. Most people would right. just say, whatever, forget it. I'm not going to make right. a scene but it was call a kavod to her that she got up and she didn't give up on it and she wanted to show people i matter i'm here right. in the room right exactly yeah so not to be afraid to say your your words loud and clear Important. i'm hoping that a maybe because of covid it brought a little bit more to the surface of of older people mm -hmm. um also, because lifespan is getting longer and we are all realizing as a community, as a country, as a system that things need to change. Mm -hmm. And also people themselves, as they grow older, find their voice and realize that things need to change and are, are making waves suddenly and they're not sitting quietly anymore, which is, which is exactly what, what should be done. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's... That's exactly where we're going. And the more we talk about it, the better it'll be. Well, well I I'm, I'm really happy we did talk about it. I don't think we talk about it nearly as an, nearly enough. I'm hoping that more sessions like, like this or other sessions to do with ageism would come up and, you know, it would, it would become more of a spotlight discussion. Mm -hmm. um, There's many, many materials you can look up on YouTube. Um, just write ageism, that you'll find a lot of examples throughout the world. It's very, um, in the world, they talk about it a lot now. 
I recommend looking up the things. Oh, that's really good to know. Okay, mm -hmm. that's really good to know. Mm -hmm. um, Technology is amazing, I have to say. <laughs> you yeah. can find anything, anything yeah. on Google. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much for this conversation. It was a very informative and very, very pleasant conversation and very fun and interesting. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. If anybody has any more questions, then, you know, Shilly's number is on the screen and she's more than happy to discuss further issues or if there's any problem or something that you want to address either on the Facebook page or call one of us directly. Um, we'll do what we can to help. In the meantime, thank you very, very much, Shirley. You're welcome. Thank you. Thank you for this wonderful project. <laughs> thank you very much, all of you guys, for listening and being in tune. And um, follow me on my Facebook page, and we're going to have another interesting talk in another couple of weeks. So in the meantime, have a wonderful good night. Take care. Bye-bye.